All right, let's get started. It is Tuesday afternoon, which can only mean one thing. I am live streaming my work on Gymnasium on Twitch and on gymnasium.com. Uh, where am I? Here I am. Uh, yeah, so um, my name is Mike Pifulco. I am Director of Technology for the Gymnasium. Um, we are an online code school. We offer free, uh, self-paced, video-based online courses on design, development, uh, all kinds of things that are helpful for uh, technologists who are looking to break into development or designers who are looking to learn more about development or vice versa, developers who are looking to learn more about UX and design. Um, we've got a myriad of great courses on all kinds of things from uh, tools and technologies to um, uh, using our, our um, some of the, the uh, products that we run into day to day. So like GitHub, we've got a JavaScript course, we've got a responsive web design course, which is tremendous. Uh, the Node.js course is a great starter if you've never worked with Node before. Um, some Bootstrap stuff, some WordPress stuff, you should go and take some of these courses. We would love to see you there. We would love to hear your feedback on them. Like I said, all the courses are completely free uh, and uh, we uh, only, only get courses or we only create courses that are taught by folks who are um, uh, doing what they teach in the industry. So in other words, these aren't just teachers, these are people who are working on Sketch or Git and GitHub or HTML5 forms uh, in their job day to day who we've also wrangled into building a course for us. Um, we'd love for you to take them, they're free, they're great. Uh, and once a week, like now, I jump on to uh, live stream to show you what I'm working on. So uh, we're continuing a project we've been working on for a few weeks here where um, I've been uh, building a new front end for Gymnasium. And that's maybe a bit of a misnomer, but we're essentially rebuilding all of the marketing pages for Gymnasium. So everything you see when you go to the gymnasium.com as a student or as a, as a person who's not logged in, so you're not necessarily a student yet, uh, we're rebuilding all of this um, starting in, we're, we're in the early stages right now, but we're rebuilding it using Gatsby and Storybook and React uh, and a whole stack of other things, including Heroku and Netlify and CircleCI and lots and lots and lots of good stuff. Um, so I am here to continue working on that. I'm going to pick up uh, somewhat where we left off last week. I did a little bit of work uh, without y'all. I apologize, but it had to be done. Uh, and so um, let's jump right back in. So uh, if you recall, actually, I don't even think I have it running right now. I should have done that. Okay, let's 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 pick up where we left off. So there's a what we're doing is we're, we're building all these front end pages using Gatsby, a static site generator based on React. Uh, we are um, taking that Gatsby uh, course and um, or sorry, taking the Gatsby pages and turning them into um, uh, a storybook, or actually, I guess I said that the wrong way. So we're building a storybook which contains all the components for Gymnasium, which we are then uh, composing into the various bits of content and layouts that we want for um, our marketing pages, which will then be created through Gatsby, served through a front end that uh, will eventually end up in a Docker container alongside all of the bits that run Gymnasium. So for now, we're in the early stages of building all the uh, Gatsby and Storybook goodness. And what we've been working on over the past few weeks is getting the config just right so that myself and Justin, who is in the live chat here, uh, that we can work together on building the front end, both in Storybook, uh, on building individual components, and in Gatsby on building page layouts, uh, and have the presentation of what's there look identical. So that's actually a little bit more of a challenge than it seems, um, primarily because we're trying to stick to a, um, a dev workflow that works for both of us. So Justin is an incredibly talented designer uh, and does great prototyping um, in, in all manner of tools. But uh, for, for Gymnasium, we've largely been using uh, prototyping straight from HTML. So uh, Justin being somewhat of a guru of um, semantic HTML and all CSS magic uh, builds a lot of our prototypes in straight HTML and CSS. And so this represents the move from him handing me a GitHub pages thing that I take and, and uh, then convert into uh, the SAS that we've been using on top of um, Django templates and Mako templates. Um, and now it'll, it'll essentially just be more simplified as React components that build into a page. So I hope that made some sense. Um, I'm going to show you what we've got so far. Uh, on screen right now is um, our storybook. So this contains really just a few components right now because we've kind of been proving this out as a thing that will work. But 
Uh, for example, the gym button is a, a, a type, a content type we have across the site. These are interactive buttons. They have text in them from time to time. They are full width from time to time, uh, as well as links uh, which aren't completely uh, correct right now. So that's in a serifed font or a slab font or something like that, which is not correct. But um, the real magic and really what we've been working on has been uh, having this live alongside the Gatsby site, which is also very just barely configured. But if we look here, ooh, well, that ain't good. <laughs> but, well, if we look here, there's a button at the bottom, uh, which contain which is the same button that you would see here, right? This one happens to say hello button, but um, the idea being that when I edit the source for any one of these things, so if I go to button, gym button, and if I were to actually, let's go to the layout for that Gatsby page, because we are in a Gatsby project, I believe it's index, nope. Um, let's see, we're gonna go into that actual page and edit that button and show you that it updates. It's this index. Hello there. I hit save. This will hot reload eventually and come back with hello there. Uh, and the storybook will of course have stayed the same because we didn't edit the story, but the point being that it's the same component that's rendering in the storybook and the uh, Gatsby site. Now, what I was a little surprised by coming back into this is that the footer should be rendered at the bottom of the page here, and I wonder if I have a pull request to merge or something like that. I started a new branch just before streaming today. Um, yeah, interesting. Let's let's see what we can do about this. So, um, let's figure out where that footer went. It should be in the layout. Oops. Oops. Oh, let me zoom in. Uh, if if you are on and watching me, if if I'm too quiet or if the screen is too small, let me know and I'll zoom in or bring the mic closer, or whatever it may be. So we're going to go look at the layout here and see why that footer isn't showing up. Come on. There we go. And, no. Oh, it's not showing up because it's not there. Because why? Maybe I do have a pull request that needs doing here. Let's do that real quick. I can always switch back to the old branch, but... I think we were in here. No. Oh, I know exactly what the problem is. I created my new branch from develop and I needed to do it from master. We aren't really using the develop branch yet, so. More storybook. Sorry, I'm on my second monitor here. Uh, let me switch, there we go. Change branches like that. We've got a header and a main and a footer. And I'm gonna go delete that haphazard branch that I had created. And now if we come back, we'll probably need to, okay, I think we'll probably need to restart this because that was some old code, yeah. Okay, let me let me restart. So I'm gonna run yarn to reinstall all my dependencies here and then we're gonna get going in a second. Okay, this yarn story dev command runs both the storybook, let me zoom in, both the storybook and Gatsby. That'll take a second. So 
You can see this 8,000, that's the, the Gatsby site. The 3,000, or six, sorry, 6,000 is the storybook. And now we're back where I'd expect to be. Hopefully this link looks like it should. I thought we had finished that. Yeah, that looks a little more like what it should. <coughs> Lovely. Okay. And we do have the footer compiled in here as well. So we can see the footer in the storybook. And hopefully come back here. Refresh this bad boy. And there's the footer in the Gatsby project. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was quite confused for a second there. So, with that being said, uh, here's where we're at. So we have the Gatsby site running with a working styled footer. Um, all these are shared components between the storybook and the Gatsby project, so they should look identical. Um, there are a few uh, problems going on right now, um, which have to do with what we've been working on the past few weeks was getting the CSS modules post-processor to work identically between the two. The biggest outstanding thing right now is if you look at the gap between Gymnasium and this paragraph here on the storybook, it does not render uh, the same way as it does in the Gatsby site. And that has to do with the CSS class that's being called here not being accessible in the same way on both. So there's still a little bit of work to do there. Um, rather than futz with that for the entire live stream today, I think I'm going to kind of try and press forward and we'll get back to that. Um, we achieved some of what we needed to do on the Gatsby side by uh, working and helping to get a pull request um, released that included a setting for CSS modules. Uh, it is not yet, the similar work is not yet done for Storybook, or if it is, I haven't found the way to configure it. So here's what we're going to start with. And now that everything's running, I'm going to shut it all down. And I'm going to run yarn upgrade interactive. Oops latest like I usually do just to update some packages because there's inevitably some small changes here and because we're on storybook 5.0 point whatever uh, it's probably good to stay up to date with the latest little updates uh, because storybook is it moves quickly uh, so we want to stay up to date with it so I'll update all the storybook things usually I would go through and read all of the readmes for this stuff um, but it's generally been pretty reliable and because luckily we're using source control we can go and undo these things if we need to. Thumbs holding it up. Okay, I think that's all done. So we're going to commit that. change an index. I probably should have looked at that. Oh well. Oh, what did I change in there? Ah. Oops. Okay, let's amend that real quick. Okay. So we're going to update the other things that are in there. And hopefully this shouldn't take too long, but it's a, it's a good chore to get in the habit of doing. Um, keeps you on, on later code or up-to-date code and also keeps you away from um, some security vulnerabilities. So we probably should go take a look at what the updates to Gatsby are between 2.1 and 2.3. So to do that, I'm going to pull up Gatsby's site on GitHub here. We'll go to the change log. And we're on 2.1.37, and we're looking at 2.3.1. So let's just scroll down into there. Let's see. Shadowed components import parents. Fine. None of this stuff should really affect us, but it's a good idea to give a read. Sometimes there are new features in here. 
Let's see. Stack trace to error reporting in GraphQL. Ooh, that might be nice. Keep track of pages created by stateful. Create pages after edits. Quick check if string looks like a date. Okay, all of this stuff looks good. None of it looks worrying. Had anonymous telemetry instrumentation in Gatsby. That's interesting. I wonder what that's about. Well, we're going to update it and all of the uh, sorted plugins to do with it. And as well, we'll go through and update React and Babel. And Bootstrap, we're going to let be because we're not using Bootstrap 4 on this project at the moment. That might change in the future. Um, but because some of our dependencies are React, or some of the React dependencies we use don't use Bootstrap 4 yet, we're kind of stuck on 3 for the time being. That's okay. So you'll, if you've watched the stream before, you know that I use a mix of command line and um, rich client for Git stuff. And if that bothers you, I apologize. Sorry this is taking so long. It's a little slow, probably because I'm also uploading my stream and consuming most of the RAM on my machine with other things related to streaming. Okay, so that should do it. There shouldn't be any other updates. Ah, all right, we're gonna do it from the client here. Stage these, update, other dependencies. Great, okay. So one other thing I want to try uh, is something that was pointed out to me earlier this morning by someone on Twitter. Apparently Yarn has a command called clean. Ooh, maybe it doesn't. Okay, maybe that's gone. Let's see, Yarn uh, auto clean? It's auto clean, Yarn auto clean. Yarn auto clean. So what this will do is create a dot yarn clean file, which contains, much like a git ignore, a list of files that yarn should remove from node modules. So test directories, asset directories, examples, code coverage, build scripts, configs, and miscellaneous stuff. Um, and this should, I believe, only affect uh, node modules. So let's let's take a look at the um, the documentation for this. 
Auto cleaning commands uh, frees up space by removing unnecessary files and folders from dependencies. It reduces the number of files in your node modules folder, which is useful in an environment where packages are checked into version control directly. Okay, so that's really not my case, so I probably don't even need to do this. Unless you're experiencing issues with the amount of files that are installed as part of node modules, it's not recommended to use this command. It will permanently delete files in node modules, which could cause packages to stop working. All right, we don't need that. We'll ditch it. I'm good with that. Goodbye. All right. So let's make sure I didn't actually destroy anything there by running yarn one more time. And we're going to run yarn story div to get the thing back up. Almost done. That's one half. Something broke on that side. Okay, okay. Oops, okay. So, storybook broke. That's not great. Failed to load preset. Oh, okay. Field browser does not contain a valid alias configuration. Oh, got it. We might need to define which browser browsers we're compatible with for the Babel upgrade, I think. So we can search for this. Hmm, I know my project is also based on Yarn scripts, uh, React scripts rather. So if I do um, node and then node modules, React scripts, and then lib, nope, and then bin. Start, it might prompt me. This is going to take a couple of steps here, but, oh man, okay. Let's 
do this for a second. Um, can I find a required file? Great. Okay, that wasn't great. I'm gonna set this to null. Okay, we'll figure out how to set those browser things for Babel. Yeah, there's lots of related things for Preact and blah, blah, blah. So this is something that, I'm not the first one ever to run into this. Okay, tell you what, we're just going to go and un-update that version. Fable core to 734. 734. Great. Run yarn. Okay, and now let's see if Storybook runs. No. Interesting. Cannot find module emotion core package dot JSON. Oh, so this is a Storybook problem. Okay, so it's not a Babel thing. So let's grab this. We're going to go into the storybook github. Oops. Typed that wrong. That's okay. We're going to search in issues. We're going to look for this. <laughs> Strangely seems to work after deleting node modules and yarn lock and running yarn again. But the problem is when you react, upgrade React v1685 along with Storybook 505. Uh huh. Okay, so let's try that. Oops, make sure it's saved. And then
Okay, do we get it back? Wow, no. Okay. That's great. Um, more time. Damn. Not great. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a new new branch from master. Give it an arbitrary name. Uh, well, not stash our changes because we're just going to get rid of them. We'll delete our changes. Yeah, we'll come here. We're gonna run yarn again and get just literally back to where we were at the beginning of this whole mess. Software development. It's the best. I should really do this part off stream. I'll do that next week. to the cat. All right. <laughs> We're back. And it's funny. It's funny that it wants me to use the new version. I bet. Okay. Don't care. Storybook should be back and working. Cool, now we can make some progress. All right, so we're gonna get into some of the mess of playing around with Gatsby, I think. Um, we've done a lot of the storybook stuff, we've done a lot of this compatibility stuff, and it's all great, but I think what I wanna start to do is shape this Gatsby project a little bit more so that we can get it looking more like gymnasium.com. Um, I'm not gonna go to too crazy of a length to do a lot of this stuff. Um, for example, this top bar, I'm going to skip the logout bit because there's some technical mumbo jumbo that we have to uh, get across to actually be able to log out, but I'll probably just stub in the content areas. Um, and to be fair, some of this stuff is subject to drastic change anyway, but we'll get kind of the general structure of the page down uh, before we before we kind of start moving on. So. Um, what that means is that I can go into Visual Studio since we're just going to be working with Gatsby for the time being. I'm going to come into Visual Studio, hit my little debug thing here, and run this Gatsby develop, which will give me nice um, IDE features for Gatsby. Um, 
It lets me set breakpoints in Visual Studio, among other things. So let's do all the things. Uh, we're going to start to set up our home page. So we've got a components pages. We have our index page, uh, which right now renders a bunch of markup, but we probably want to, I guess we can consider the index page to be the home page. That's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, but we're going to stub out how this looks. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Yeah, that, that makes good sense to me. Oh, is it still running? What's going on here? Something didn't run. Oh, that is really hard to read. Cannot find module core JS compat data. Uh, Did I run storybook? That's not what I wanted. Run develop. Boy, sorry about that. What does that mean? Why? Why, why, why? static entry. Maybe I need to clear my cache here. I thought there was a something to clear the cache for Gatsby. Because it looks like this is yelling about something cached. So Tell you what, we'll delete it ourselves. Oh, Lord. Okay. Boy, today's going great. Cannot find module. Come on. Wait, okay. This is very confusing. I'm gonna gonna do that. Then we're going to 
set ourselves up again here. Hopefully this is done better for us. All right, that looks like it did it. Great, now we're back to where we started, which is actually quite nice. So I'm gonna to start to build out the other components for the site that will make it um, feel like home. So we're gonna start but with the header, uh, which has several components for us, but we have this top bar in black, we have the middle bar, which has some navigation stuff, and then we've got a third tertiary navigation that shows up on some pages. So all pages have these top two, so we're gonna start with that. So we'll go into the layout. The layout has a header and a footer. The header currently comes from dot slash header. We are going to take that and put it into its own folder. Appropriately misspelled. Rename, please. Header. In here we'll put an index. Yes. Put that header there and move this into here. And we're going to do a silly thing. Actually, no, we, I, I like keeping my components capitalized, so we're going to do that. And there's a funny thing about Git and Mac OS that Git on Mac OS isn't case sensitive but it should be okay in this case because we moved the file. So if you just rename, like if I renamed image.js to image with a capital I, it would create all kinds of problems. But because I also moved it, Git will see this as a diff and will actually have moved slash renamed this file from source components header to source components header header with a capital. So it's lowercase here, capital there. We will have done that correctly. So let's make sure this still works. Uh, I'm gonna close some of these things we don't need. 
close the storybook for now. We'll close these guys. Great, we still have a header. That header is coming from this file, which I can sort of prove by changing what it says, perhaps. Hitting save, coming back. Waiting for a refresh. No, nope. we'll refresh ourselves. No such file or directory. Ah, okay. So it's it's struggling here. So we'll start it over again so it can find the new file. with warnings. Uh, export default. Imported as header was not found in dot slash header, which is true because we have to do that. Export default. Imported as header was not found in header. Compiled successfully. Okay. So that will import header from there, but we also want to add it to this index, just like that. And now I can compress these into one. And that should work. Then if we come back here, is running. We've got our updated header from this new file. Great. Okay. Now we have a header. <sighs> you can see how this is all coming about. So um, what we might actually do too is create a layouts directory perhaps or just a layout directory and make the header and the footer subchildren of that because they'll only ever be used from that base layout. But for now this will do. This is fine. There's no need to re, um, rehash all this stuff until we're blue in the face. So what we're going to do is we're going to mimic this. We're going to have a black row and then a grayish row and put the associated text within each. Um, Boy, first things first, we're going to trash most of the stuff in here. So the site title is good. We'll have to um, change it from saying, oh, it does say gymnasium. I thought it said Gatsby. Well, at any rate, uh, we're going to get rid of all of this stuff. We're going to use a CSS module for it. So we'll create that. Module.css. I believe I've stayed capital with those. Yeah. OK, great. We'll get rid of that. Let's see what was there. A background and a margin. That's cool. Uh, we don't want that style applied. We don't want that style applied. So it's all very simple. We're getting rid of all the styles in here. It's no longer purple. No longer has a width set up and all that. And we're going to start with some bootstrap stuff. Uh, column row from React Bootstrap. Actually, we might even do this with nav. The nav stuff is really annoying in Bootstrap, as I recall. Hmm. Let's try that.
Ooh, interesting. Maybe we should just go ahead and switch. Maybe, maybe. I'm not sure I want to go through all this trouble. There's a lot of a lot of crap to put in there. Hmm. I mean, it is sort of by necessity a complex thing. Yeah, okay, I guess we should do it. So these docks aren't great. Okay, we may go in a few different directions with this because it seems like there's a lot of technical choices to be made. And actually, it looks like I haven't even added bootstrap here yet. Right, I've just added it. I, I've not added it as a React thing. So maybe that's not the end of the world. So let's get rid of these guys. And that was kind of an intentional choice. So the reason we didn't use the React version of bootstrap was because... Um, my compatriot Justin is uh, not um, a React developer, he's an HTML, CSS, JavaScript type developer. Um, and so keeping this in familiar HTML is appealing in that sense. And it's also not too difficult to redo this stuff in um, full on React if we need to down the line. So we're going to start with just keeping it simple then. So we're going to do a header. We'll keep some of this stuff here. We're going to do Class name equals uh, container fluid, and we're going to give it an ID of uh, nav primary nav top. that'll have a container within it. So our nav, some of this is bootstrap parlance at the moment. Yeah, cool. Just kind of setting up the very basics here, and right now I'm not using their navbar stuff. But what this should do at the moment, it's a little difficult to see, but this left edge should be lined up with that left edge. I'm literally going to use a piece of paper to check on my machine. Yeah, that all looks lined up to me, which is at least where we want to start from. So we could start to combine some of this stuff. So we can have a header there. It shouldn't look any different. Uh, 
And instead of displaying gymnasium there, we want to put a gymnasium image. No, actually, sorry, we don't even have a link in that top bar. So we're going to do primary nav container, because there's a full-on container. And then this will be ID primary nav top. And that, for the moment, will contain mostly nothing. We're going to duplicate it. And this will have, I'm just going to put my name there. And in here, we're going to put Just like that. Yeah, cool. So we have some of the structure down. We can now start to style this. So one's the top, one's the bottom here. Here we're going to say background. I believe that's just black. Of course, it's not applied to anything because we haven't included this. To be honest, don't know if that would have worked anyway. See what we're getting back in terms of classes here. Okay, so this is a CSS modules thing to get used to. I guess we can leave leave that there. We're gonna do. got to do a bunch of stuff here. Okay, so I hope this makes sense what I'm doing, but I'm basically applying CSS classes to these um, various header bits. That is not where that goes. Okay, so what I'm saying is div class name equals container. We're going to do um, turn this into a templated string and this will be classes dot primary nav top and then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom one it'll just be differentiated and say bottom hit save it should come back and ideally We will have primary nav top, primary nav bottom. Don't know why I'm not seeing that background color though. Maybe this needs to be a dot, I don't know. I'm still learning here. There's strangely no CSS showing up there. Let's do that. Let's use dots. Okay. I'm not sure I get that. Okay, so we just learned something there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't think that ID um, classes work as we expect them to in CSS modules. Okay, not the end of the world. 
Um, some other things we learned, uh, I, I, this was obvious, I guess, but the um, fluid container needs to contain the background color. So despite myself, I'm going to paste this here, change that to container dash fluid, and then container. Okay, a couple of things have to happen here. So, doesn't IDs have a hashtag in front instead of a dot? Yeah, that's true. So, um, we are <laughs> uh, we are using CSS modules here. So you'll note this says module.css, um, which effectively takes the CSS and and does some JavaScript magic and turns all of these rules in this header module CSS into their own unique class, um, which is being spat out in the console right now. Classes are, these are the names of the classes that are being generated based on that. So header module, primary nav top, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're being sent into this classes JavaScript object, which I'm importing from that CSS module. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but it's pretty cool once you get used to it. I'm still getting used to the rules, so I haven't really done this before. Um, Okay, so we, we need to do a couple of things here. So we're going to have uh, this will be container fluid and then so that should have a container around it. That's great. Okay, now that's Got a black background. We're going to do the same here. Primary nav bottom container. That's great. We'll close that off. Save that. Okay. Now we're now we're in business. So. It's not right, but it's starting to look more right. We can give this a height of height here. It's possible that that didn't work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see I'm getting confused between JavaScript and CSS when I put strings in my CSS. Okay. I'm going to have to figure out whether I want to work in EMs or REMs or what. Save that. That's yeah, a little more like it. Actually, maybe even, I mean, some of this is like, th this is a very basic um, definition of a layout for the time being anyway. What might end up happening, excuse me, what might end up happening in the end is that uh, Justin and I put our heads together and decide not to use Bootstrap for this, or we might use a different approach. We might use someone else's um, layout protocol, do our own media queries. Who knows? Uh, for the time being, I'm just sort of structuring this stuff out. Um, so, like, I can tell you already that what I <laughs> actually, what we should probably do is a grid layout for the whole page. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe that's the way to do it. That could be fun. Okay. Well, before I get too out of control with crazy ideas, we're just getting this structure down. I can see already here that this page is going to get messy, and, like, this is not super readable, um, which flies in the face of my hopeful strategy for for doing this with react so what I'm gonna try and do is some um, uh, some some refactoring here so I'm gonna one of the nice things about having this header directory is that I can have sub components in here that are like top row bottom row etc etc so let's see what we can do under the refactor menu here nope source action I know there's some shortcuts in here command palette Extract, extract method, no, component, no. Apparently I have to install some stuff to do that. That's totally fine. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this, we're gonna 
cut it out of here and we're gonna do import header top row from there we will add a file called header top row actually I'm gonna make a folder called yeah I don't know we're just gonna make a file no need to overcomplicate import react okay we'll pass the classes into this which will make life easier And then we're going to say put that there. And I may need to restart Gatsby to make this thing work. Apparently not. Looks like that worked. Oh boy. Sorry, my laptop is suffering here. What's the base size for your rim? That's a good question. I think it's 16 pixels. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Minor detail. Check the render method of header. Okay. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we can check that height in pixels. Oh, they're 10, they're not 16. So we might need to do some reset CSS stuff. Apparently the ideal height for one rem is 16 pixels, I believe. I, I don't really know why. Um, that's just something that's floating around in my head, which is probably a good thing to discuss with Justin at some point. Uh, <laughs> you can see where the edges of my understanding fall off. But that's all right. So this is one approach here. We're going to put a top row and a bottom row in separate guys. Which is an approach, and it's going to work for the time being. And I'll show you a second approach. Should work. Ah, we need to import link. Okay, we're going to need to put some other magic in the bottom row. So this is going to just take uh, classes and site title. And in header bottom row, we're going to do classes equals classes. Pass it through. Okay, we're back. You can barely see my name there. Well, there's some CSS magic to be done here. So what this did was okay. This is an okay first approach. Um, it basically took those two rows and put them into their own separate components. I can already see a problem with that in that if I find a problem in either row, I'm going to have to go and do the work twice. So instead, we're going to do a new component 
we're going to call it a header row. And we're going to do import react. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, roommate's on the phone down there making some noise. I'm sure you can hear that. Crops. And we're going to do prop types for this one. And export default prop. Uh, sorry, header row equals. Oh, that's all we need. Okay, so in here we're going to do a return. And we're going to take, I'm just going to grab one of those two components, doesn't really matter which, and we're going to, oh boy, okay, come on. Lord, my machine is absolutely ruined right now. What can I close? Twitter, I suppose. Okay, uh, so we're gonna grab all this markup and we're gonna re, re, uh, recompile it, reformat it. So, trying to be as generic as possible here. So we know that this is gonna need a background color, which will be a string. We know it's gonna need an uh, ID Actually, that may not even be true. And then children. We know it's going to need children. That's easy. Okay. That'll be prop types node. And what we're going to do here is instead of putting that link here, we're going to say children. And all this other stuff will be the same. And we're going to set a style here. So. Um, we'll destructure our background color here and children say uh, header background header whatever header container and here we're going to say uh, background color background color. Actually, we don't even need to do that. Just like that. Ch children always need a parent. <laughs> oh, with the crying Isaac, too. Okay, so now we can do some magic here. It's going to be container fluid. Uh, we're going to change that in a second. This is going to say style equals styles dot header container. And if there's a background color, it'll apply that. I don't think that's a problem yet. We'll start building this out in here. So we're going to do import header row from header row. And here we're going to say header row. Drop in the site title there. Uh, we will so children is being rendered there. Actually, this may may be working. It is not. Ah. Okay, this is already looking good. So we're gonna say header row container, which will just have a height of five rim. That's great. So this will be 
Jupyter Pro container. And this will not have that. So we don't need that. So this can just be a string. That can just be a string. Should still work. Okay. And now if I come into my header and I pass this a what was it? Background color equals oops. We need to pass it a valid color, of course. Maybe that'll work. Didn't work. Uh, let's let's print it out here. Okay, okay, it's in there. Ah. There we go. Great, okay. So, now we've made this easier on ourselves. So now, all we have to do to render a row is uh, I can see this <laughs> actually I can see this quickly going in the direction of what those bootstrap uh, classes were doing anyway but um, we'll get there that's cool I'm, I'm good with that so we're gonna have a header row we're just gonna re uh, recreate what's above so we're gonna have a header row with a background color of zero and then one with twos which we should put into some um, constants before long. Header row container. So this rule is not being um, used yet. So we're going to do this does in fact need to be a string template still. Great. Those are both rows. Um, we might even say display. Uh, we're gonna let that be for now. All right. So now we've got our header here. The top row has should have a link in it. Or actually, the bottom row has a link in it. Okay. So let's undo some of this mess I made. Children just passes through the children that are passed to the component, so we don't need that color there. We're going to get rid of both of these because they're already starting to confuse me. And then instead of both of them having the site title in them, one of them is going to have my name here. And... Cool, cool. I need to figure out how to swing that over to the right and then also to have a left and a right live alongside each other. We can re-import that link component that we had in the bottom row. And this will be link to equals slash with the site title in it and a link there and we're basically back where we were so we have a link to the home page we have this we have that it's starting to look more gymnasium-y it may be the case that the second row needs some added border padding we can work on that too could you pass each their own css module yes i certainly could um yeah so if i if i had a classes override here something like that oop, no not there if i had uh, accepted classes in here. Uh, I would call this base classes, and then I would say rename that to um, input classes. I would say const classes equals base classes, and then input. 
then that would recreate it so that I could have my base classes and then overrides passed in through a um, another classes prop. And so what I should do here then, which is not a bad idea, classes prop types dot shape, that'll come in as a dictionary basically. And so if I wanted to pass, yeah, it's separate CSS modules into each one, I could do that. Yeah. We can even show that off. So let me get rid of this top and bottom row nonsense that I had set up originally that we're no longer using. Top row, bottom row, delete. Those are both gone. So let's just show what that would look like, Josh. Um, let's make sure this is still running and working. Yeah, cool. So inside of the header row, let's let's do a classes dot something else here. So, um, well, no, actually, we can just pass it a different header row container, can't we? So. Um, Let's do that here. Uh, top row classes. We'll just show up what that looks like. Import top row classes from. I have to create that file. And we will give this a, let's give it seven. The top one will be bigger than the bottom one. And so now we've got top row classes defined here. We pass them into this header row. And if it worked, yeah, look at that. Now the top one's taller. So we have an override ability there. That's pretty rad. That's cool. That's a really simple implementation, uh, and it allows for override ability, and it's not actually not a bad pattern at all, as far as I can tell. Um, and, and actually what I could do with that then is uh, put this background color in there. Right? I can say background color uh, red. Right, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, there we go. It's red now. So that's pretty cool. And then I can make the color. Oops. Thinking and saying different things. Right, so all kinds of stuff we can do with that. Um, okay, so with that, it's about 3 o'clock, so I'm going to... Um, Call it quits for the day here. Um, we are starting to form form this page into what it should eventually look like. So as a reminder, this header and footer are now starting to look like the header and footer for gymnasium. We'll get some logos and stuff in there next time. We'll also work on splitting out the header so that it's got left-hand content and right-hand content, or maybe like this for you, or like that for you, I don't know. Um, and then we can start figuring out what goes in between all of those things. Uh, and then somewhere along the line, we're going to work on getting the footer bits to work correctly, too. Uh, for the time being, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for hanging out today. I appreciate it. I'll be back next week or around about the same time. Uh, until then, you can get me on Twitter at Irreverent Mike. Uh, and we're always live. <laughs> the courses are always live on gymnasium.com. I am not always live on gymnasium.com. Anyway, have a great week. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we'll talk soon. Bye, guys.